All right, here we go. Face scribe. Um, for comp, we were using two tanks, four healers. I believe a couple other guilds five healed it. So you can use either four or five healers, up to you. Um, we were struggling with the DPS check week one. Um, so we just opted to four heal. For tanking, Blood DK really strong on this fight. If you can run double Blood DK, I recommend it. Um, just because you can change the vice to your own ad. So no one else has to worry about you. Um, for DPS, you can bring literally anything to this fight and it'll be fine. So let's go to raid plan. Um, this up here is the entrance of the room. You will need to drop a couple markers for reference. Um, our marker was green right here, star right here. Um, and we also dropped markers for calling where the safe zones are during dodges. And we dropped those, I believe, on the third ring inside. Something like this. Purple was over here. Moon was over here. This was orange. It, it looks something along these lines. Um, these are not exact, but we just use these markers for calling like which way you should be moving during a dodge. Um, so these you can kind of use however you want. The two important ones that you want to have here are green, that is over here, and yellow, that is over on the top side, so opposite of each other. This is because this encounter revolves entirely around dodging beams. In the up phases, there is nothing else that's difficult about this encounter. If you dodge beams, you live. If you die to the beams, you wipe. Um, and the beams have specific spawn locations. The way the spawn locations work, there are two areas of the room that are generally safe. Or even if they're not safe, you will have a much easier time dodging stuff if you're in those two areas. And that is here between orange and green, and then between moon and yellow. Um, so these areas, this slice of the room, and this slice of the room are generally the safest slices that you can play in, uh, these two. If you're outside of those, you will certainly get beams on top of you and you will have to move a very long distance to dodge them. So essentially the way you set up the strategy is that you just alternate between the green orange side and the moon yellow side. Um, so on pull, you will have the boss from the middle. You just pull it here, um, your whole raid stands around here hitting the boss nothing not much happens i'm gonna have both tanks on here because it's kind of important for the tanks so once the first tank debuff comes out your tank rotates 90 degrees away from the raid so our tank just goes right here the tank debuff drops after the tank debuff drops the tank um we instantly get a set of dodges you dodge the beams Right after you dodge the beams, the tank kites the ad into the center of the room. The boss gets pulled to the center of the room simultaneously. The raid follows, and you meet up with the tank ad and the boss in the center, and you cleave them down in the center of the room. The reason we do this in the center of the room is because you get the mythic soaks. The mythic soaks are randomly spread out throughout the encounter area or the room. Um, so that means that the shortest distance to any one soak is from the center. Because let's say you're like, you know, a freaking paladin out here minding your own business and you get a soak on the opposite side of the platform, you're never making that. So before the soaks happen, you need to be in the center of the room. Now, after you're in the center of the room, you kill the tank ad, small ad spawn, uh, you kill those, then you get your second tank ad. Second tank ad goes to green. Now, as soon as it goes to green, it explodes, the whole raid follows and stops about three rows in from the outside. If you stop three rows in from the outside, 
That means that the orbs that you get right during that uh, overlap have space to place them whoops, on the outside of the room. So you can get orbs that are placed like this. The raid will still have space to dodge the beams that happen. If the raid moves all the way to the edge, you're making it impossible for this person with the orb to run past the raid. They will have to run somewhere else, and you're getting beams during this, so it's super unsafe. Instead, you just stop a couple of circles before the edge, and that gives your orb space to spread out along the edge of the room. This set is also a really good one to use immunities on, uh, because this is where you will have to dodge three sets of beams. So as soon as you move to the edge, you get orbs and beams. This beam combo, you will get three beams, um, like back to back. So you do one dodge, then a second dodge, then a third dodge. After the third dodge, the boss needs to be low enough health that you can push to the next phase. Uh, in the intermission, you will get two as that spawn, one spawns here, one spawns here. Your tank needs to pull them um, over to this little lip. So as you can see, this is where our tank stands. These ads will stop and cast. You pull them in, you tank them on the lip here, so they're close to the edge. Now what this does, it allows melee DPS to just hide behind this lip whenever the ads are casting and line of sight their AoE. Um, range DPS can just be 25 yards away from them and they outrange it. But melee DPS need to use line of sights to uh, cheese that mechanic. Um, other than that, in the intermission, intermission is probably the easiest part. Uh, just use any generic weak aura to assign who goes to which rune. And you wait until all of them are active. Your raid leader calls three, two, one. You step in and you all rotate the same way. For phase two, your tank positioning will just mirror phase one. So you start on orange and green side. First tank ad comes out, runs 90 degrees from the raid. The raid then, as soon as you do the first soak, meets up in the middle. Till the first tank ad, second tank ad comes out, you run it to star. Uh, as soon as it spawns, the whole raid meets the second tank ad on the third circle. You do three dodges, then you push the boss, kill the tank heads, and you set up a warlock gate that goes from here to here. As soon as the intermission starts, you warlock gate from one side to the other, you get pushed to the edge um, of the rings, and you just repeat whatever you did in the first intermission. Then in the last phase, you do the exact same movement as you did in phase two, except instead of meeting up with the tank ad in the center of the room, it will be somewhere a little bit off to the side because people are dealing with ranks. So that's the movement that you need to know. Let's take a look at what the fight actually looks like. So you can see that we have marks set up, um, same ones that I just showed you on the raid plan. You pull the boss, you play on, about, on the third ring. That's generally where you want to play. It's the safest zone. Um, you want to make sure that you have healing cooldowns for like the big dots that go out. That's the only thing that will kill your players um, is if they don't get healing during the big dot. You get bombs, bombs go to the edge of the room. Tank ad goes opposite of the raid. Bombs go off. Tank debuff explodes, then you get a dodge. You dodge, move close to the beams. Um, one thing to notice is that I use freedom to run through these little balls uh, and they do no damage. So if you have paladins, they need to be using freedom and just clearing for your raid. This is what the tank or the mythic mechanic looks like. Um, you will have several soaks, but only one of them is assigned to you. You need to find which one has the giant arrow over it and stand in that one. And make sure you stand in it until the animation of it disappears because the debuff will disappear before the animation. If you run out when your debuff disappears, you're going to wipe the raid. We get second tank mechanic, wait in the middle, 
As soon as it spawns, we run to it. At this point, the boss should be around 74%. We're actually a bit low here. At 71.9%, he will stop doing mechanics. So if you ever push the boss low enough, like we did right here, you will not get any more beams. So we only had to deal with one set of beams, which is actually kind of bad because it messes with healer cooldowns a little bit. Then you just mass grip adds, nuke them all down, and the boss phases to intermission. Uh, there will be a spawner that appears right on X there uh, that your raid needs to be mindful of. So in this intermission, I actually got the assignment. I always mark one ad with skull. It's always the right side one because you want to kill one ad as fast as possible. Um, and that will give you some leeway and make it a lot easier on your tanks. So these ads will start casting despair when they're halfway to the raid. Despair has a 25 yard range, so you want to wait for the Despair cast, then run to your rune. Or alternatively, you can run past these adds before they cast their Despair. Um, here, I just chose to wait until they cast, then I uh, ran to my rune. So on this one, I'm actually late to my rune. I should have ran through, but I didn't have Charger up. So I just go into my beam. Um, if you don't have an immunity there, then you need to wait out for the previous beam to cross. And then you just all rotate the same way. Um, the first ad should die fairly quickly. Um, the second ad will die as we go into phase two. So for assignments, we always assign our tank to the innermost rune or the innermost ring. Then I was assigned to the second one. Um, a couple of other melee DPS can be on the second one as well. And then as you move outside, outwards towards the edges of the ring, you assign more ranged DPS. And then one thing that I should point out is that Holy Paladins in this phase are using bubbles and freedoms and just clearing for the raid. You will see them running around the center here, just clearing these orbs. Um, they're using bubble and freedom and just running around healing players who are running the beams and clearing as many orbs as they can. Um, also worth noting, do not stand on the inside part of your own rune because that will make it so you pick up the debuff from the beam and it will kill you. If you ever have to dodge out of your rune, always dodge towards the outside. So there are five seconds left on the intermission. Um, what we always do is the easiest rune, so the one that's closest to its destination, we make that player get it close, but not finish it. Then when there are about three seconds left on the intermission, that's when they finish it, uh, just to get us more time for our cooldowns to come back up. So we finish, last person finishes, we pop all two minute cooldowns. We finish off the ad that was remaining from the intermission and we hit the boss. So now we just mirror the positioning of phase one. But instead of starting by the entrance, we start on the opposite side of the room. So you get orbs and you get a tank debuff. Orbs just spread out behind the raid. As long as you're on the second or third ring in, you have space. Tank debuff goes opposite explodes, we get a dodge, we dodge these beams, then we meet up with the tank ad in the center of the room. As soon as the beams goes off, we go towards the center of the room. We get to the center, then we get mythic uh, soaks. Everyone goes and soaks their rune. Of course I got it again, because why not? Stand in it until it explodes then move back. You finish off this tank ad. You want to kill this one fairly quickly. Um, cleave all the small ads, and then you get your second tank ad of this phase. The second tank ad just runs out to the edge that was marked. For us, it's star. As soon as it explodes, we run and meet the ad. Now again, you will get the very bad overlap where you will have to deal with bombs and three sets of beams at the same time. Here, you want to get the boss to about 43%, 44-43% uh, before focusing all your damage into the tank ad. So we get beam one, move to the safe zone. 
Beam 2, move to the safe zone. Beam 3 is a little bit delayed, move to the safe zone. Um, and it's important that someone's calling where the safe zone is, so not everyone has to look. Then as soon as the boss is below 43%, we all swap our focus on this tank ad. This is because if the boss is sub 41.9, I believe, or 42.9, he does not spawn another tank ad. So you need to get the boss within that like health range where he stops doing mechanics. Um, so as you can see, boss is low enough that the tank ad that's supposed to spawn in half a second actually doesn't. So instead, we just finish off all the small ads and we push the boss to the second intermission. As soon as these small ads spawn or die, everyone gates over. You gate over and you repeat the exact same thing you did in the first intermission. Um, in this one, I don't get assigned a rune, so I can show you what the movement actually looks like here. Once again, I mark the closer uh, ad for everyone to focus down. Your tank pulls both of the ads to this corner um, past the lip. And once they cast Despair, you use this lip to line of sight. Um, it's actually a very, uh, okay, there we go. So during the first intermission, the spawner orb that you can barely see here behind my UI will be exactly where I'm standing right now. So if you're not a Retribution Paladin or you don't have an immunity, you can't actually hide here. You have to go one back or two back and hide on either the second or third lip of this little ornament thing. Um, on this one, you can actually hide on the first slip. So you hide, line of sight it, actually just use freedom and soak all these orbs that are spawning out of it anyway. And now we just want to finish off Skull. As soon as we finish Skull, we just focus all of our damage into the second one. And right as the intermission ends, you will get another Despair cast. Um, so you will see right here, there's five seconds left or seven seconds left on intermission. We get another Despair cast, we line of sight, and then the intermission ends. So from here, you just want to pull the boss and the ad together. You want them to meet kind of halfway, and you just want to cleave the, the ad down as you're focusing all your damage into the boss. This is where you bloodlust and use your potion. So for movement here, it's the exact same as phase two. You get orbs, tank debuff, and a dodge. Uh, except the tank debuff happens a little later here. So you get dodge, then tank debuff. Tank debuff goes out. As this tank debuff explodes, the rings will activate and players will get assigned. Um, on this one, it is not possible for everyone to just go clockwise the way you do in the intermission. So on this one, you will actually have to communicate just like you do on Heroic uh, and call for backups. If your rune is about... I would say 70% of the way um, towards its destination, you can make it. But if it's any more than 70%, then you don't want to do that. Um, then you want to call for a backup and go the opposite way. So here I'm assigned to rune 6. That's the outermost rune. I just run after it. I look. I'm exactly halfway to... I'm a little more than halfway. So halfway would be there. I'm about 55 to 60% of the way to my rune, so that means that I can do it by myself. If my rune was a bit more to my right side, maybe over here, I would have called for a backup and we would have gone the opposite way. And as soon as it's active, you step in it. Oh, actually, I did call for a backup anyway. So it was only a little bit closer, but I called for a backup. I could have made this one either way, um, so it ended up not mattering, but... If it's very extreme, like 80% of the way, then you definitely want to call for a backup. So we just finish this off nice and quick. Everyone else finishes their runes. Um, the boss and the tank ad met up, and everyone killed the tank ad, we killed the small ads. You get the second ad. Ideally, you would want to move into this one um, because you already have orbs dropped on this side of the platform. So a second tank ad comes in. 
Then you get three dodges. You just need to make sure you're safe. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Immunities there are great. Um, the second tank ad we actually kill. You just need to kill it before it gets 100 energy. And then the third tank ad we ignore. And also the second set of rings that you have to do, we ignore. So you only have to deal with one set of rings in the last phase. Here the call is just kill the boss before 35 seconds are up. So the tank is literally just running around kiting his ad. We never touch it. He just chains the vices and runs around. Um, no one goes out to do runes. You just kill the boss. If you were behind on damage, you could technically deal with this set of runes and this tank ad, and you could stay in this phase for a lot longer. But we had people dead, and we still made the damage check, check so it should be OK. And that is Mythic Fate Scribe. So a bit disappointing. Um, biggest thing that you will have wipes and deaths to is getting an orb during a dodge. Um, so you want to make sure those people either personal and just eat the beam um, or have immunities or the raid makes space for them to drop their orb in the safe spot.